Quick Slants is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. We got a weekend off. Yeah, maybe. But does that mean we're going to relax now? No, it doesn't. You know what? I put up there buy-in time. And the reason I did on that particular door was the Patriots are slashing off the weeks and they're stacking up the wins. At 5-4, and four, they are on the road to somewhere. But how far can they get dragging that dumpster fire of an offense behind them? They have the bye week to get the patient up on the table and figure out the root cause for his lethargy. I'm calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard... You know what the problem is? Yeah, I do too. It's too many problems. But I do like the defense. I do like the defense. Let's try and keep it positive. There's a game plan, and it's right here. Tough enough? Mac Jones. Interesting comments. The buck never seems to stop, does it? Chris Long, he will join us for irrelevant questions. That's not IQ. Yeah, that's IQS. And there's a poll, and there's comments. There's actually two polls. And here, ladies and gentlemen, comes a Kay Adams. Hi, Frank. <laughs> I like how you entered the studio today. You're very excited. Oh, yeah. uh, dumpster fire offense, great defense. Thank you very much. We have a tweet from you earlier in the week as well. Thought this was interesting. No one would have thought. Hey, nice job filling in as a spokeswoman for Dix. Is there anything you don't <laughs> excel at? Water sports. Who would have known? I thought you could at least kayak with the best of them, Kay. You're out of your mind. Look, I'm in California right now. As you can see, it is raining. I have a pool I have never been in and will not be in because water is not my thing. That's not my thing. Can you go full screen or just look at this panoply of luxury that she's living in right now? Look at this. No, it's not that. Luxury. Thank you. I will say, what an adult I am that I don't look at the weather. And I'm pretty sure you're supposed to remove these sort of things so they don't get ruined. Oh, the coast is going to fill up. Those little waxy, the waxy mosquito candles are going to fill up. You're going to have to dump those. Just throw them all away. All right, it's time now for Quick Fire. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Kay, what do we got out there for the music and the sound? Well, you mentioned Mac Jones. Let's hear him yesterday on the offensive line. Whoever's up there, you know, I trust them all. Um, they've gotten reps together in one way or another, whether that's in training camp or last year or whatever. And at the end of the day, it's five guys who just want to be out there to help the team just like everybody else. So when we play together, which we usually do, it's good. And then when we kind of, you know, don't show effort and toughness, me or anybody else, then we're not as good. So that hit my ear. That hit my ear. That hit my ear. The effort and toughness. And he immediately tried to put the toothpaste back in the tube by saying me or anybody else. But no one's saying that they're not showing effort and toughness. Is he in some way insinuating that that's lacking? Because if he is, Kay, he's probably not that far off the mark. You can't be that <laughs> creating that many gaping holes for defenses to penetrate through if you're not having levels of lapses. Uh, yeah, and he said that about the offensive line. He was very positive on the guy getting most of the criticism on offense in Matt Patricia, though he was defensive of him. Yes. Uh, so I thought that was interesting as well because a lot of people pointing to Matt Patricia's mm, mediocre, should I say, vanilla granola sort of uh, offense that we're rolling out there. And that's going to have to change potentially by week. Because let me tell you, after the bye week, it's no picnic. You got the Vikings, the Jets, the Bills, woof, woof, woof. Tough schedule for those paths. Absolutely. Okay, uh, let's move on to defense. Are we, is the national media talking about Matt Judon as defensive player of the year? Because they should. Unbelievable. First in the NFL in sacks and over 11. Second quarterback hits. Uh, amazing. Second pressures. What do you think of this? Great juju. I think what's interesting, and I don't know if the national media was wise to this last year, he started out like this. And then he kind of plateaued and slid off at the end. This year, though, he says Pilates, okay, Pilates and flexibility. It's getting more pliable. He feels like he's going to be able to close the season strong. But who else would you say is really a defensive player of the year candidate along with Judon at this moment? It would be just him. And, I'm, you know, I, I was looking at his numbers today. It's incredible what he's doing. Uh, and I, I, there's not a more valuable piece. If you're watching any of this Patriots game, he pops off the screen. So uh, I will certainly be waving that flag for him to be defensive player of the year. I also have So L.A. This is so gross. My first one-on-one -on -one Pilates session tomorrow. Do you really? Tomorrow. 
Yeah. Wow. We're I'll text you. We're going to bring you out here to roll you up like a bowling ball and spin you across the studio. I know. Uh, okay, let's move along. Here we have to talk about Jim Ursay. Um Always interesting to the ear, always dings your ear in a certain way. And here he is talking about Frank Reich being out and Jeff Saturday being in. Yeah. Expectations are high here. Look, we're the fourth winningest franchise in the league since 2000. All right, that means in the upper quartile of winners, we're in the top quartile of that upper quartile. Can one more time on that? Can we just see what that flounder just said? Yeah. Expectations are high here. Look, we're the fourth winningest franchise in the league since 2000. All right, that means in the upper quartile of winners, we're in the top quartile of that upper quartile. All right, be that as it may, that was one of the most disturbing press conferences I've ever seen. I'm sure at some point you have had your paths crossed with Jeff Saturday. I wonder if some of it is he might have been the only guy willing to take on this particular mm. car that's about to go over a cliff. We haven't, you know, we haven't heard from any of that long list of guys within the building, some of the guys outside of the building that may have wanted the job of interim coach. But Jeff Saturday is looking at this. You know, I talked to Lara Overton. She's as close to the team, uh, the reporter for mm -hmm. the Indianapolis Colts this morning up in Adams. And she said that, you know, the players are taking a lot of culpability. The players are feeling guilty about what's gone on, especially with the shock of the Matt Ryan benching, the deal and Naeem Hines. All of it sort of points to them wanting a higher draft pick to me next year. And that's what it looks like, of course, Ballard saying they're not mailing it in. They're not giving up. But a uh, strange press conference. I got to hang out with Jim Irsay and his entire family about a month ago in Indy. I think he's passionate. I think he wants to do the right thing. I think he wants his team to win. And I think he feels that more and more as each year goes. So we'll see if this is the right move. Jeff Saturday being the long-term answer sounds absolutely zany yeah. to me. But crazier things have happened in the NFL. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't do a good enough job setting that up for the folks who are just joining and love to watch the show. Frank Reich, head coach, fired yesterday on Monday after the Colts lost to the Patriots. So you're up to speed. Uh, great job by you. OK, Tom Brady, let's move on to this. He, of course, has his Let's Go podcast with Jim Gray. And he was talking about Bill Belichick after Bill congratulated him on surpassing 100,000 passing yards. Yeah, we had 20 years together of elite football experience that I wouldn't have traded for anything in the world. And I know he's a great competitor, what an amazing coach he is and how he prepares the team to win. And he's just done it year in and year out. And the fact that he's 22 wins away from an, an amazing milestone, I have no doubt he's going to get it. And I just watch that team every week and impressed by how they prepare and, and the accountability that that organization has had. And uh, it always starts at the top. Well, on one hand, tremendous tribute from a great to a great on the other, if he's watching every week, he's not seeing a level of preparation that's worth getting all hot and bothered about, Kay. I've got to be candid. Got, yeah, I think, I, I think we got to go. I think we're ready for the poll. That's what oh, I want. Fine, fine, fine. Love you. Yeah, we're ready for the poll. I just wanted to hear you <laughs> slander. Uh, uh, this, is, of course, is from the stands, presented by Shaw's, perfecting the art of fresh. I threw this out there earlier today. Poll, um, will, will the Patriots offensive issues prove fixable for the end of the season. 4% he said, mm -hmm, 100% coming soon. 50% remains optimistic. And 46%, which I think is a pretty good chunk, said, no, come on, You're too far gone. Okay, what do we got? Well, Zach says, thank you for treating the show, Zach. The way I look at it, it's, if you asked me in week four, if I thought the Bears offense would ever get it together, I would say definitively no. So I'm using that same energy, especially <laughs> since we have significantly more talent plus Parker returning. Okay. All right. Oh, Biscuits. Uh, if it were one player, just issues with game plan, I could see the bye week being enough time to work it out. But it's everything. Penalties, blocking, INTs, game plan, fumbles. Quarterback looks scared and lost. Two weeks, not enough time, especially and folks also need R and R. Panic Gamer says, Tom, who in God's name is optimistic at this point? Come on, Tommy. I'm not saying the lack of sobriety is the answer to that, but I think that those picking too far gone don't partake in liquid lunches or drinking before 10 a.m. And Mace 
says the week after they had the opportunity to self-scout and make changes will be telling. Also, the health of David Andrews, massive. That's true. What yeah. has been obvious when Williams and DeForest Buckner eating the interior line for lunch. And there will be another Quinn and Williams walking through with a napkin affixed to his oh, neck, please. ready to dine after the bye. David Andrews, great observation. I thought those were all really good comments from our always astute group, don't you? They were really, really good comments. Uh, and if you have a comment for me before I go, because I heard you say that Chris Long's going to be the best thing in the show today. So and you have to go. No, it's not going to be the best. The best thing in the show is going to be this from Kay Adams. This is the SK portion of the program. And this is Kay being prescient. SK, hey, hey, hey. I think he shuts everyone the hell up. I love Tua. I believe in him. Let's go. All right. We How do you know? How do you know? How'd you know? How'd you know? Because uh, this McDaniel character just really grew on me, and I liked him and Tyreek Kill, and I thought they could do it all and get creative. I thought they'd be even more creative with the run game. Uh, I don't think that he is the MVP, and that he certainly hasn't shut anybody up because I said he needs to be in the MVP conversation and got laughed off Twitter by a lot of uh, a lot of people. I know he's not the favorite. You've got Allen, you've got Lamar, you've got Mahomes, and et, et cetera. But he's got to be in there. They're six and zero oh when he is on mm -hmm. the field. You saw what the team looked like when he was off the field with those concussions. And if he keeps this up, he's got to be in the combo. All right. Enter him into the convo. Still not convinced. Still not convinced. But he is officially entered into the convo. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lucky to have you. Thanks, my buddy. Uh, coming up after the break, I'm going to hit you with my slam. We're going to look at the pecking order in uh, Foxborough and note that the poop always rolls downhill, doesn't it? Quick Slants is brought to you in part by Dr. Matthew Lopresti. The hair doctor of Tom Curran. Growth potential brought to you by Dr. Matthew Opresti. 1 800 get hair. Uh, this is Bill Belichick prior to the season speaking with Dan Shaughnessy of the Boston Globe on Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Obviously, had been scrutinized greatly at that point. And here's what Bill had to say to Dan. I think they're both good coaches. Ultimately, it's my responsibility, like it always is. So if it doesn't go well, blame me. Time now, ladies and gentlemen, for my slant. Watch out! You know, we are in a weird period with Bill Belichick. He's chasing the white whale of Don Shula's record, and we are just gobsmacked by his Mount Everest of accomplishments. 13 conference championship appearances, nine Super Bowl appearances, six Super Bowl wins, an undefeated regular season. This stuff is never to be matched. Greatest ever in the NFL, and every case can be made that he is the greatest ever in any sport. Simultaneously, we sit here sometimes and wonder what the hell he's thinking the past few years. This no one in particular plan to replace his offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, who he knew would get another job. Just shoving Matt Patricia in front of a promising quarterback and saying to Mac, here, listen to him. And they literally gave Mac and Matt a new offense and a new language to learn. Now, nine games in, the whole show on offense is probably worse than we figured it would be. We blame the lead actor, Mac, the supporting cast of the offensive line. We blame the skill players. And we get after the director pretty good, too. But we kind of gloss over the executive producer who put it all together. That's Bill Belichick. Here's Mike Lombardi earlier this summer speaking about, excuse me, this is Bill Belichick talking earlier today, um, about the Patriots being, well, predictable. Two or three plays for sure that uh, Leonard uh, really, uh, you know, got a big jump on uh, and and stopped us basically uh, on those plays. Um, you know, Mosley Mosley got a couple of those. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago in the Jets game, it looked like Mosley. You know, almost looked like he heard the play in the huddle. Yeah, that doesn't seem really the normal uh, M.O. down in Foxborough when you're just acknowledging that the other team got your stuff. Bill didn't win 330 games or whatever it is now because the other team knew it was coming. There's no Sun Tzu quote about the inviting the enemy into your huddle to help you win the, the battle. The Patriots have tried to be a bunch of things on offense this season. They've proven to be incapable of all of them. Now they're left running basic stuff the other team sees, co sees coming. And Mike Lombardi said in September, this is what I was going to talk about previously, he said, you see a little lack of focus offensively because they're kind of all over the place. And I think this is the challenge that awaits Bill as he watches this offense. How does he say no to all these ideas that these new coaches 
have brought into the team? And how does he remain focused on the task at hand? I think that's the real challenge. I think that's what they have to do. The Patriots ain't done it yet. And that's on Bill. Not that that's news to Bill. We got another poll for you guys. Appreciate you guys involving yourselves two times. Where do you think the blame lies for the Patriots' offensive impotence? Bill, 41% of you. 37% are going to give that to Patricia and Judge. 16% for the offensive line. 6% want to give it to Mac Jones. It's interesting because I hear from all the people who want to blame Mac Jones, and they get mad at me. Uh, Matt C., the pool guy, 508. It's a tough one to answer. Judge and Patricia were my vote, but BB is ultimately the one who put them in charge, so I guess it falls on him. Well, fair, fair. I mean, there is a lot of divvying up to do, but we have risers and fallers to hit right now. Hopefully the Patriots offense will be a riser after the bye week. The first riser that I have today, Josh Uche. Coming off the edge, the kid out of Michigan, the former second round pick, second round pick, second round pick, three sacks against the Colts. Not a big guy, a fast guy, a bender. Really like him on the other side of Matt Judon. Hopefully he continues his good play. Next up, Jonathan Jones. Really steady player. He's a captain now. He ends up with a scoop and score and a block punt. One of the better players on the Patriots defense. Hats off to Jonathan Jones, number 31. One of many Joneses contributing this year. Finally, our last up, the Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. They knock off the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. Stunningly, after losing to the Patriots the week before, they cast into some level of disarray the AFC East, which suddenly looks like one of the best divisions in football. You kidding me? Also, you kidding me with this first baller? It's my guy. The indefatigable one, the cannon-footed Jake Bailey. Jake, what are you doing? Your net is one of the lowest in the league, dead last in punting average and net average. After they were re-signed to a fat contract in the offseason, hopefully you could turn that frown upside down. Next up, we have David Carr, and he tweeted this last week, a quarterback ranking. And I don't know what he was hitting before he sat down and put this together. But he had Justin Fields. Okay, he's playing pretty well. Davis Mills was the number two. If he, Mac Jones is all the way down there behind Sam Ellinger. Trey Lance hasn't played, and Zach Wilson was a flippin' disaster and continues to be. Still well under 60% completion. So I, I don't get it, and I just think he took a lot of abuse when he was drafted by the Houston Texans in 2002, and that's the outgrowth of it. Finally, the Bills are a faller. And it's not going to be often that we say this, but those Buffalo Bills were ticketed to waltz directly into the Super Bowl in Chandler, Arizona, and now they've lost to the Dolphins and the Jets both in the division? That's eye-popping, eye-popping to me. All right, I am out of breath. That was too long of my slant. I had a lot to get to. I'm gassed. Coming up, uh, we have a promo. I'm like lost on the sauce here, folks. Wednesday at 6 o'clock, tune in for the game plan. Tom Giles will be joined by two-time Super Bowl champion Vince Wilfork. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Whew. Coming up after the break. We have the great Chris Long, and this is not Bucket's fault. He's done all he could. It's me just having to jam too much in on the B block. It's on me. See you in a second. This is the best part of the program right now. It's irrelevant questions. First question, what's your biggest phobia? I'll give you some options. You want some snakes. options? Snakes. I mean, okay. like, like, sna- like a shit. pit of snakes. No, the open ocean, you know, like... You know that movie, um, Deep Water or whatever, just where horrible. people are just out there. They're just like, there's no boat. They're in the middle of the Pacific. Like, I'm not going to survive that. Not because I can't swim, because I'm going to choose not to swim. This is perfect for my next question, because uh, did you ever have a moment of, um, hmm, this is interesting. I might die here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've had a few of those. I was rafting on the New River in uh, West Virginia. And we tried to surf this rapid, which is like you go back up and it's like class four or five. I don't know. And we go back surfing and we get dumped. And I got sucked into a hole. And like I was under there because they take, yeah, they take video. Like some of these, these uh, holes on that river, like really deep. And I I timed it. I think I was down there nine seconds. I kept swimming up, like just up, up, up. And it was like, I wasn't getting to the top and I was like, oh my God, I'm, 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 I'm going to die here. You know, it was, uh, and then I'm up to the top and I'm like, oh, you're being dramatic. But they take videos, like you can take a video home. So we timed it. I was like, damn, I was down there a while. 
It's NFL coaches and their Halloween candy or approach. This is the last portion of the program. Bill Belichick, what is his approach or which candy is he giving out? Remember when Bill went to the um, the Halloween party? Yep. And he was roller skating around. I think he likes. I think he likes dressing up. I think he'd be like a really good house to hit. I mean, what am I going to do? Stand out there with huge the spots? What, 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 what do you want? What do you want? King size candy. <laughs> like no, he's uh, he's. Uh, I think he'd be really nice, dude. I think he'd be like a great house to hit. Uh, maybe a hot take. All right, no, I like it. Brian Dayball. Oh, he'd be he would be slamming beers on the porch. <laughs> I love that costume. Yeah, uh, Andy Reid. I think Andy might turn the lights out. Hot take. I think Andy Reid might turn the lights out. I, I don't know. There's just something about it that makes me feel like I'm gonna zag and say Andy Reid might be a lights out guy. Maybe he's maybe he's a bull on the on the porch guy. All right, last two. Dan Campbell. I'm not really sure. What do you think Dan's like? I think Dan might be giving out maybe beef jerky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. That's a great call. He's giving out yeah. beef jerky. And then we got Sean McVay. I don't know what McVay would do. What do you think? Nuts. Nuts. <laughs> like like all the like, joy? Yeah. No, not no, something kinda of, guys, this is kinda of healthy for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. he's all he's all strangely jacked. Be safe out there. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely a health guy. Yeah. If you don't enjoy irrelevant questions, I can't help you! Chris Long, the Greenlight Podcast. I invite you to please listen into that. He takes his podcast to the next level. They go on and on and on, and every minute of them are fascinating. Of course, you can catch Kay Adams, too, on the Up and Adam show on FanDuel TV. Follow her on Twitter, at HeyKayAdams, or at the Up and Adam show. You can get all the intel you need. Bye week coming up. We're probably going to hit you with a whole mess of bye week awards next week. And on the Next Pats podcast, you got Phil Perry this week. See, I had an extra little extra time at the end here. So I did all that stuff.